Sarah, a group that represents the denomination, meets every four years for the General Conference to vote and rule on what is added to or subtracted from the Book of Discipline, which is the law and doctrine the church follows. But there are certain issues that the church is torn on and that even a vote can't seem to fix. But the church at large. Jeff Gage is a senior pastor at Lane's Chapel United Methodist Church in Tyler. Is going to allow churches to graciously Gage care. grew up in the United Methodist Church, which was formed the same year he was born. There's no easy short answer in any of this, and it is sad. Everything happening within the church hits close to home for Gage, but this isn't a new problem. It goes back many, 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 many years. I mean, some would argue that this was a little bit of a problem baked into the denomination when it started in 1968. The Methodist Church is conflicted about how their congregation will move forward. The politics of everyday life are present in the church, separating members on their religious beliefs. They began a push to include individuals who practice homosexuality to ordain them as clergy. A divided issue the UMC voted on at the General Conference a few years ago. In 2019, there was a special session of General Conference to, that was going to hopefully settle the matter once and for all. That's the, that's a very but when it came down to the vote, it came down that we were going to keep the Book of Discipline the same and still not ordain those who practice homosexuality and not celebrate homosexual unions with marriages in our churches. But the members who are supportive of the LGBTQ plus community felt that something needed to change. So there was a call for a revote in 2020, but then the pandemic hit, delaying the general conference again and again until 2024. We were notified that general conference will not meet again this year, but it will be delayed to 2024. However, this disagreement goes beyond views of sexual orientation. You can pick any number of issues, that, that being one or two, that there's just going to be a wide divergence of belief within the church on that. And that divergence has just gotten to a degree where we're not united anymore. For many of these churches, like Lane's Chapel, for example, the people don't own the property, the denomination does. So if members decide to stop being United Methodists, they're forced to vacate the premises. Now, this is one of the many issues that makes a clean split so difficult. Well, there was people talking and, and, and planning, how can we part ways and, and allow churches to keep their facilities without dragging it through the court systems? Because if you look at the Episcopal Church, the Lutheran Church, they went through that and it has cost untold dollars. Amid the conflict, a conservative and traditionalist group was forming behind the scenes. And the Global Methodist Church said, we're going to go online, we're going to start May 1st, and anyone, pastor or church, who wants to align with the Global Methodist Church is welcome to align. Members have several options. They might align with the Global Methodist Church, choose a new denomination, become independent, or stay with the United Methodist Church. There would be a traditionalist church form, and then there would be a post-separation United Methodist Church that would um, become more progressive. But separate is the only way members feel they can move forward peacefully. There are going to be conferences across the U.S. where there will be a resolution or a vote. Okay, can we as a conference or can churches within our conference join the Global Methodist Church without a long drawn out church fight. Ranga says churches on both sides are trying to proceed with caution and avoid a legal battle. But it's really something that historically has evolved and changed over time and built up and it's an accumulation of of, of a lot of things that have led us to this point. In addition to a lot of delays and not addressing and resolving some of the the differences. There are additional problems which emerge from this split, including exit costs, property rights, pensions, and missions. Nobody's going to win in this. It's, um, it's sad. Divided and ununited. The Judicial Council met this week, which is a version of the Supreme Court for the Methodist Church. They ruled that the annual conference in the U.S. cannot disaffiliate from the UMC as a single entity. Churches will still be leaving the UMC in the future. This decision only changes the path and timeline of those exits. Reporting in studio, Katie Pratt, Fox 51 News. Mm.